That's why someone with a 3.9 GPA and a 5.14 MCAT score doesn't get an interview. Application renovation season three well underway. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing wonderful. It's funny. We, uh, during our little pre-chat here, realized that you lived in the same town that I'm currently living in at some point. So it's a small world. Yeah, it's but a very small town too. <laughs> we, we are not here talking about geography. We're here talking about your medical school application. Remind me kind of the the success or the non-success of this application cycle? How many interviews, wait lists, et cetera, did this application cycle bring for you? Just one interview and one wait list. So. One interview, one wait list. You got the interview, so something is good is going on. Where do you think yeah. you struggled with your application? Honestly, I mean, that's definitely like a mystery right now to me. Like, I'm sure there's many areas that could be improved. I just, you know, never really got that kind of feedback when I was um, working on it the first time around. But I think probably just being young, um, applying straight out of undergrad, um, and possibly, you know, maybe not spending enough time in the clinic and um, maybe showing them that, you know, I really do know what the career looks like. So I think in my view, I think that's what it is. Who helped you with your application? Um, It was mainly my dad, but I had like advisors and I had one um, dean from U of Kansas look at it and he said, you know, that um, he thinks I'm going to get multiple interviews and acceptances and then I got rejected from Kansas (laughs) like a few months later. Did they Um, not even interview you? No, no. So I was very confused um, because, yeah, even my like pre-med advisor didn't even give me any feedback on my personal statement. He thought it was good. So right. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I don't know what well, happened. <laughs> we'll look at it through the lens of, of my eyes. Um, yeah. and, and just a reminder for everyone, I, I don't know exactly when this episode's coming out, but my new book, The Pre-Med Playbook Guide to the Medical School Application Process is coming out. It's scheduled for May 25th. We're trying to get it up, uh, moved up earlier so you can go pre-order that. Uh, or it might be out by this the time this episode comes out. So a lot of what I do here in application renovation is in that book. All right, you ready to look at your application? Yep. All right. So let's jump in. So right off the bat, I love looking at the yep. uh, the submission date is perfect. Um, submitted nice and early. So that's good. Um, no big issues that I see in terms of demographics, uh, in terms of the additional information, no misdemeanors, no institutional action. So that's great. All right. And then we get to, let me change... I, Red, red is uh, anxiety provoking, so I'll get rid of the red. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> um, let's uh, look at grades. So obviously, I'm seeing lots of A's here to begin with. So I'm like, okay, grades probably aren't going to be an issue. Uh oh, there's a couple B pluses, um, not an issue. So we see grades, right? Three eight nine, three eight eight um, is great. So your your grades are not an issue, right off okay. the bat. Um, and you did mention you're young, so you don't have a senior GPA on here at this point. Are you still ter- taking classes or did you graduate yeah. early? I graduated early. Okay. Awesome. And I got like all A slash A minuses. So it was pretty much the same last semester. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting. Was it a strategic decision not to put your future classes on the application or did you just not know about that? I didn't know that you were supposed to. Okay, there's there's no real supposed to. You can, okay. you don't have to. The AMCAS doesn't mandate it, but you can put, there's a category for future slash current classes that would mark gotcha. it on there. Um, okay, MCAT score, 514, great score. What happened with psych Soch? That's the yeah. one that, that people are like, that's where I get all my points, psych yeah. So I was scoring 129s like very consistently. Yeah. Um, but I had this kind of episode though. I was supposed to take my MCAT June 27th of 2020, but I was in the ER that morning instead. I had like a really bad case of some GI thing that <laughs> probably was stress related. Uh, I mean, yes, very yeah. much so. Yeah. Yeah. And then so I ended up taking it July 7th. Okay. 
I don't know, you know, like I didn't really study that week because I was so like sick and recovering and in a lot of pain. But I honestly like that's something that I'm still like kind of beating myself up about because it just came out of nowhere. I mean, I was really proud of how I did in the first three sections because those are like probably, you know, some of the higher scores that I worked really hard for. So I think it was like a fluke situation. Yeah. And 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 I bring it up just because it's funny in my mind. It's like, oh, that's like, that's the section where a lot of people. Yeah, just, like, it would have been like, like a, you know, 95th percentile or something if I had just. Your your MCAT score is great. Don't don't worry about your MCAT score. So they're not going to be scared by like, oh, she doesn't know psychology. <laughs> they, they will not. So okay. not, not an issue at all. All right. And then we get into the the core of the application. And here's where I think you fell flat, which if you've watched application renovation before, uh, if, if you specifically or any else, anybody else watching this, this is where students make or break their application. It's not stats. It's the story. And I think your story does not come out at all in your application. And, and so we'll, we'll get um, to that right now. So we look at this first experience here, and it's, it's a community service co-president of Trojan Support. Um, a bunch of hours here over a good amount of time, which is great. But then you look at the description itself and it's very basic. You can see I wrote basic here. As head of training and referrals for Trojan Support, I have organized mental health first aid trainings for our members and took leadership on several, blah, 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 blah. It's very just basic, matter of fact. It doesn't really tell me who you are or the impact that you've made in people's mm-hmm. lives. Right? That's, at the end of the day, something that will tell me who you are. Show me the impact that you've made on people's lives. When okay. when you talk about here, uh, our goal is to reduce the stigma around mental health issues by educating students on how to deal successfully with mental health crisis, crises should they arise. Okay, great, right? Very basic description of what this Trojan support is. Mm-hmm. Okay? A lot of students feel like they have to give a description of what the activity is. I don't think you do. One okay. line would have said, we're an organization that provides mental health support to students. Done, right? I got it. I understand what you're doing. I don't need to know the ins and outs of the whole organization. I want okay. to know about you. So then we get to the most meaningful experience remarks. And you see here, I wrote all just stuff. And you don't really answer why. Why is this most meaningful to you? This is just a resume here. My -hmm. role was this. When students are referred, here's what we do. While we were not able to host our usual training, here's what we did, right? It's just just a list of things that you did. And so I I don't know who you are through this. I guess, um, yeah, I definitely agree on that. And I guess I tried to just kind of show like my process through the participation, like, oh, I saw this problem that existed in my like school community. And then these are the steps that I tried to take to address it because, you know, that's like kind of what I hope to do, you know, as a doctor as well. But, But, and that's the, and that's the core of the problem that mm -hmm. every student makes is let me try to figure out what medicine is like and then I'm going to frame my whole discussion in my descriptions and my most meaningful remarks around what medicine is like so that they can see that I'm ready to be a doctor. Mm-hmm. That does not show me who you are. That shows me who you think I want you to be. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad you verbalized the thought process behind that because that's the thought process students have. And it's wrong in my mind. In, in my so, opinion. So for me, I guess, like trying to just like, like follow like what you're saying. So um, for me, this club was a lot about like being around people who care about the same things I do. Like, you know, just going to the meetings and stuff. I just felt really just proud of to be there because I knew that everybody else had the same vision for, you know, just their peers as I did. And that was like one of the main things that I liked about Trojan support is that what you mean when you say like no I want to see you and your impact and I want to see that through a story so right now if if you look at your application you just have little little different pieces of the organization as a whole 
and what you did throughout it. I would have loved to see you do a deep dive into one of these experiences where stuff was hitting the fan and you had to think about what I needed to do to fix it. Or depending on the actual role, are you interacting with patients? Are you interacting with students who are having these mental health crises? And tell me a story about one of those interactions. Okay. That, that will give me much more insight into who you are without you needing to sell, look at my compassion, look at my communication, look at my leadership, look at my teamwork skills. Right? Just show me an interaction. And that makes it much more personal and much more about who you are versus what you have here. Because I could, I could take this, I could cut this out of your application and mm -hmm. paste it into somebody else's application who also volunteered for Trojan support. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't really see a difference. I okay. couldn't tell that this came from you and it didn't come from them. So then we continue on here. Um, this Rivkin Center Ambassador. Again, what's the story? What's the impact? You tried to get into a little bit of a story here talking about Jenny. I was particularly struck by a conversation with Jenny, one of our courageous survivors, but that you, you didn't really dive into that story. You okay. just were like, hey, I'm going to mention Jenny here and that's it. So mm -hmm. I would have loved to see more of that story behind that. Okay. Um, presentations, posters. I, I highlighted orange here to kind of cue into a question for you. You wrote here, my preparation went beyond the scope of my findings, though. I was curious about the significance of my work in the scheme of cancer medicine. What was your goal with that line? I, I guess for me, lines. like, you know, I was in my lab, I was always curious about the impact of the work that we were doing. Like, okay, I'm working with these, like, tumor suppressor and cancer cells in the hood, but like, what, when is this, if ever going to become something that it can actually help people? What already exists in this realm of data? Mm. Um, is this something that is just going to be like gene therapy or, you know, is it going to be something different? So just kind of things like that, where I, I read, you know, a few books from my lab, like the emperor of all maladies. And that was something that really struck me. Um, just like, because I'm so interested in just like the origins of yeah. cancer. Um, yeah. So I think that's really So how that comes across is, hey, look at me. Look at how much I love knowledge. Look at how inquisitive I am. Mm -hmm. Look at how much I go beyond what is required of me. It's a sales pitch. Again, it's, it's what do they want to see in a student? Well, they want to see someone who loves to learn. So I'm going to say my preparation went beyond the scope of my findings, right? I love learning so much so that I'm learning even more than I need to. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's how it comes across. Again, it All comes right. across as a sales pitch. And these are very common mistakes that students make. As soon as I read that, I just shut down because I'm reading a story or a description from a student who is trying to paint a picture of what they think I want to read. And gotcha. I'm not getting to understand who you are. That's why someone with a 3.9 GPA and a 514 MCAT score doesn't get an interview because the reviewers of your application read it and go, another one right? Another yeah. student who's just trying to sell me on what they think a good medical student or good physician is supposed to be. Okay. And, and they're yeah. not connecting with a human being. Extracurricular activities. Great. You have a yoga instructor here. Um, I, I highlighted 50 hours here because this is over the course of a couple years and you have 50 hours. So in my mind, this is just a fluff entry. O um, over the course of a few years, 50 hours, I'm like, you didn't do anything with this. Why, why did you put this in your application? I guess just because yoga has been such a big thing for me. Like while, even if I only taught for 50 hours, I took classes for a lot longer. Okay. And um, so I just wanted to include it as something that like makes me me. But Okay. So if I were to look down, I'm looking at the rest of your... Um, activities. So I would have put yoga as a hobby instead of okay. putting it as an extracurricular activity as a yoga instructor. Gotcha. 
so that you could have had more hours and it would have highlighted more about who you are as someone who is a yogi and not someone who spent a few hours over the course of several years as a yoga instructor. Again, this looks like fluff to me. Someone who is trying to sell, oh, look, I'm a leader. I'm a yoga instructor. All right. Mm -hmm. So you just got to be careful with those kind of entries. And then the the line here that I highlighted, while yoga is not a substitute for soccer or basketball, is a very negative statement. Why would you put that? I guess I was kind of thinking about how young kids, like, because I think I talk about it in the scope of like the Orthopedic Institute um, and how I taught there. And I guess I was kind of referring to how stu- like young kids, you know, often play sports like soccer or, or basketball and they don't they very rarely do yoga um but I was just kind of trying to provide like more evidence for why yoga might be beneficial to them um even though it's not super common okay but I probably didn't phrase it in the best way you're right okay uh, we keep going. You have publications, a, a very technical, I wrote here. So just you got very technical with your research stuff and, and it doesn't have to be technical. You're not trying to prove that you know the ins and outs of the research. I just, again, I want to understand kind of your role and your impact on the research. What did you do? I, I think I did that because I'd already, t- like, I have like one major entry for research and then a poster presentation and the publication. So I guess that's a question for you in terms of like, should I just combine all of those into one entry or is it okay to have multiple, but just has to be more personal? It potentially is okay to have multiple. I don't think there's a right or wrong as long as Mm -hmm. it makes sense in the end. This one though, is just very technical. And at the end of the day, doesn't, doesn't help me understand who you are. Um, community service here as a senior health educator, peer health exchange. Again, I would love to see a story of you interacting with whoever you're interacting with on a day-to-day basis. Again, it's just a lot of basic description about your your day-to-day. Don't I give a story in the second, um, paragraph about, um, a, a girl asking about just, um, like consent and things like that, but I could, I could expand on it, I guess. There's no story here. Um, I, or I just, that example. Yeah, that's not a story. That's one line that says, my boyfriend keeps asking me to have sex, but I'm not ready. Can I say no? That's not a story. That's just okay. one line. Story, an actual interaction showing impact. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we have your first clinical experience here. Right, so we've we've gone through a bunch of activities, and we get to your first clinical experience from six eighteen to six nineteen. So over the course of a year, sixty hours. So again, a year, sixty hours, mm-hmm. not a lot of time spent doing this. And then over the course of, uh. August 2019 to March 2020, again, pandemic obviously probably prevented that. Uh, You had more hours, so you were doing more things, uh, which is good. You call it clinical experience, but then you talk about organizing patient records, planning fundraisers, and making phone call follow-ups with patients, all non-clinical activities. So... It, that's a big red flag. It's like, okay, we finally get some clinical experience and the things that you focus on are non-clinical activities. So is this really a clinical experience? So we keep reading and we find out, I spent hours making friendship bracelets and then I just give up at that point. Okay, this is not clinical experience. I'm going to move on. Um, and then a lot of students love these kind of I learned it taught me type statements, which I just, I don't think help on an application. So you said it educated me of how similar their questions and concerns were and their need for a voice of comfort and care. Okay. Right. It's like, Hey, I know what patients need. Mm -hmm. Great. (laughs) You're going to learn a lot more in medical school and residency. So that's, that's not why I'm accepting a student. I'm not accepting a student because they know that, 
their questions and concerns are similar. Okay. okay. And then we get to research and lab. Over the course of a couple months, which is very interesting, 730 hours over two months. Is yeah. That, is that correct? Yeah, because I it was a um, f- like an international. We flew to Oxford for like a month and a, about a month. So and did so, you just do twenty four hours times however many days? Um, probably. No, <laughs> I guess not. But I'll, like it was, yeah. I guess it was like nine or ten hours a day for a month. But I guess that's well. That would be three hundred hours, right? Yeah, thirty days, three hundred hours. Yeah, I get. Yeah, I guess I just like included like the entire time I was there, which yeah. is probably not the right thing yeah. to do. Yeah. So, so when I see that many hours in that short amount of time, it's a huge ex- exaggeration. It's the same struggle that military members have, right? Because it's a twenty four seven job in reality, uh, mm-hmm. or on paper, but in reality, it's a normal job, nine to five. Obviously, deployments and exercises and all that stuff. I, I get it. I understand. Um, but don't count 24 hours, count eight hours, 10 hours, et cetera. Um, and then again, the sales pitch, right? My cultural awareness will be essential to prescribing relevant and effective treatments. Again, you're trying to sell. I have the skills necessary to be a doctor. I don't care about that. I want to know who you are, right? Help me understand you as a person. Okay. And then I will want to invite you for an interview. Physician shadowing. So you have a decent amount of shadowing. It's from a couple of years ago. I would like to see more. Why don't you have more shadowing? Um, I was supposed to shadow summer 2020 with um, a cancer specialist okay. um, over at Stanford, but obviously that okay. wasn't viable. So yeah, I, I knew that I didn't have enough shadowing and that was definitely something that I was going to, I was relying on. Okay. It, yeah. In the grand scheme of things, shadowing probably is not the biggest issue for you. It's going to be clinical experience. Um, I think yeah, I and I've fully worked on that in the last like four months. I've Good. worked as like, a clinical research coordinator. I've been Good. in the clinic for like, yeah. Great. So you knew that as a, an issue. And then again, another what I see as a fluff entry, a couple years, 30 hours, talking about this vegan club and, and what is involved there. So I see it as a fluff entry just because of the hours. So it's better just not to include it? I probably wouldn't or try to figure out how to increase the hours okay. uh, without lying. <laughs> um, and then we get more research, right? In 430 hours here, we have research here is 730 hours. We have uh, publications here. We have a uh, presentation poster here. And I start to see this picture of lots of research zero clinical experience. Are you sure you want to go to medical school? And that's, right. that's always the question that'll come up. And so mm-hmm. the, the story that you're getting at just doesn't paint a picture of someone who understands what you're getting yourself into. Uh, and then we have swim club. I'm just, I highlighted intercollegiate athletics. There, there's no strict definition of this. I consider intercollegiate athletics, like you are a Division one, division two, division oh, three. Oh, yeah, definitely not. Person, all right? Not swim mm-hmm. club, not rugby club, not any of the clubs. And I know clubs can get competitive and there's travel and all this stuff. That's not intercollegiate athletics. Intercollegiate okay. athletics for the purposes of this is like you were recruited to go play a sport. And, and that just typically tells a different story um, for some of these. And again, I understand club sports, you can be recruited. Don't, don't come at me. Um, but I just, I don't like that category for, for that kind of stuff. Um, I I've seen intercollegiate athletics, which is it just like a big no for like intramural sports. I'm like, no, that's, that's not, uh, intercollegiate athletics. Um, extracurricular activities. You have photography here. Again, you used it to sell my pursuit of professionalism. Look at me. Um, and then we get to, um, teach aids intern again. I would love to see a story. You basically just had a list of tasks here. Yeah. And then we get to your personal statement and here's where, here's where I think the personal statement just did absolutely nothing for you. It, it just, you tried to get too fancy by combining photography and how you look at your photography subjects and how that matches with medicine. 
let me tell you right off the bat for everyone listening, do not try to take hobbies or your past experiences as an athlete, as a professional, whatever, and tie it to medicine. It just doesn't work. And so you can see here, right? You, you talk about being a photographer and how you look at each person and the smile and the laugh and the glance and, oh my gosh, like as a doctor, I need to look at each individual and blah, 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 right? You were trying to make all these connections that at the end of the day, I just want to understand who you are and why you want to be a doctor, right? And, and much more focus on the why do you want to be a doctor. I don't have it through your clinical experiences because I don't see any clinical experience there or not your clinical experience, but your extracurricular activities because I don't see any clinical experiences there. I see lots of research. I see a little bit of shadowing. I see what you call clinical experience, which isn't clinical experience based on what you told me you did. And so I get to the personal statement going, okay, I hope, I hope you made the common mistake of I talked about it in my personal statement, therefore I'm not going to talk about it in my activity list, which is a, a mistake. You should talk about it in your activities as well. And so I get to your personal statement, hoping that there's lots of clinical experiences that you're gonna focus on here. And you first start off with, hey, I'm a photographer, that's going to help me as a doctor, right? What you took the personal statement to mean was, here's how I'm ready to be a doctor. And all I want to know is why do you want to be a doctor? So you can see here the things that I highlighted. Uh, I'm going to apply this perspective to the practice of medicine as well. Again, you put it in the present tense. I apply this perspective to the practice of medicine as well. You don't practice medicine now. So yeah. I'm like, uh, that's a little off. Um, and then these learnings will help me enhance my treatment plans as a future physician. Again, I don't care that you think that. My role right now is to not is not to accept or invite people for interviews who think they're going to be amazing physicians. I hope we all think, right? I hope everyone thinks they're going to be an amazing physician or else why would you do this, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I want to be a doctor. I think I'm going to be a mediocre doctor. So <laughs> I'm just going to try it and see, right? Everyone, everyone hopefully wants to be an amazing physician. So... It just, it just doesn't work. Again, accumulating skills and knowledge to help contribute to the scientific fields. You're just sales pitch, sales pitch, sales pitch. And then here's like, ooh, I love to read. So I like science. I'm a learner. You should accept me. I'm ready to tackle the, the volume of information. All right. Again, just nothing is here's why I want to be a doctor. It's here's why I'm ready to be a doctor. Here's how I have the skills necessary to be a doctor. And number one, anyone can say they have the skills necessary to do whatever, right? So, so that to me doesn't mean anything. And number two, you've already proven that you don't have experiences in and around patients, or at least you didn't show that to me in your extracurricular activities. And so for you to now draw conclusions to say, look, I'm ready to be a doctor when you haven't put yourself in situations to show what medicine is like, I just, I don't trust anything you're saying at this point. Again, just the stuff that you're talking about, botanical gardens in the city of Oxford and kind of, look, did you know that Tylenol is a, a plant? I'm like, okay, great. Why do you want to be a doctor? And, and so we get to the end of your personal statement and, and people can kind of slow down and read it and see what I'm highlighting here. But at, at the end of the day, I don't understand why you want to be a doctor. I don't think you have enough experiences to understand for yourself why you want to be a doctor. And therefore, I'm not going to invite you for an interview, which is kind of the result of your application cycle. Amazing stats. You've proven that you are good academically. But now I need to make sure you understand what you're getting yourself into. And then just one other thing I want to highlight here, again, is negativity. I see this. Um, I could hear the frustration and pain in their voices when talking about disappointing doctor's appointments and distressing negative test results. I read that and I go, this is someone who thinks they are better than all the other doctors out there right now. Mm. Right? Look at, look at all of these disappointed patients because of these crappy doctors. I'm going to be better. Okay. Yeah, that was not my intention, but I can understand how it's not. I hope not. I, I hope not. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> um, but that's what I see. And then 
again, you tried to get fancy with bringing it back to photography here at this last sentence. I just, I don't like that style of writing for a personal statement. Okay. For a poem, great. <laughs> for a personal statement, no. Yeah. Um, and then we look at school list. And you applied to 32 schools, at least here on this application. 28 and secondaries, yeah. 28 secondaries. And we have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve of them public out of state schools. Yeah. Why did you apply to that many public out of state schools? I honestly just didn't really know what I was doing when I created my list. Um, I didn't really have any like advice or I just kind of went by stats and schools that seemed you know like yeah. a good fit and i could definitely use help on number number one downfall is using stats to apply to schools okay <laughs> almost so then what do you use um use the schools themselves what are this what is the school's curriculum what is their mission what is their vision what what sort of access to resources that really drive you and motivate you uh do they have so looking at the schools and not the stats. Your stats are going to get you in almost anywhere. So you should not be looking at stats for schools. You should be looking at the schools and doing lots of research. Looking at stats is the lazy way to create okay. a school list. Um, and inefficient because almost half of your list are going to be schools where you probably have zero shot. Unless yeah. you have significant ties to the state. Um, and so you just got to be careful, right? I, I have university of Colorado. I should have checked as well. University of Colorado is a very out of state friendly school. Um, and, and I didn't look at the rest of them to determine if they're super out of state friendly as well, but, um, uh, it just depends, right? University of Michigan as well. Super out of state friendly school for a public school. So great stats. I don't understand who you are, why you want to be a doctor. You didn't have the experiences yet. It sounds like you're getting the experiences now so that you can tell a better story. Yeah, I guess um, I just wanted to ask about, so maybe I, I'll do a better job of like summarizing what exactly my clinical experiences were in, in undergrad. Um, and a lot of it was like, even if you do volunteer in the clinic there, it's not like you're like, the way that it's set up is just, you're not really allowed to do that much like, actual being in the patient room kind of clinical stuff. It's like, oh, here you have to like do stuff that's gonna help doctors like behind the scenes. And that's what- Yeah, and that's um, that's just not clinical experience, right? When, when I first volunteered in the hospital thinking I was getting clinical experience, I sat at the information desk pointing people to the elevators into the gift shop. I was like, whoo I'm getting clinical experience. And it just wasn't clinical experience. And so you have to realize that you just spend a lot of time doing something, whether that's the only thing you could do or could get, or you thought it was clinical experience. It just wasn't. So now you move on and it sounds like you understand what clinical experience is now where you're actually interacting with patients and doing stuff with patients in some sort of a clinical way, right? Making friendship bracelets with patients is not clinical experience. Playing bingo at the nursing home with the resident is not clinical experience. Um, so there, there are lines obviously that have to be drawn and it sounds like you understand that now and you're doing things now, which is great. Yeah, so for the last few months I've been working as a clinical research coordinator. So I've been kind of like 90% responsible for making sure the trial like goes smoothly on the ground and okay. doing EKGs on the patients and sputum inductions and um, taking down all their data and their blood draws and all of that. So that Perfect. that's clinical, right? Perfect. Yes, that is that is clinical experience. And now the goal is moving forward, reflecting on those experiences and showing the reviewer how those experiences have made you want to be a doctor. Right. At, at the end of the day, looking at your personal statement, I have no idea why you even went down this path to begin with. So I would recommend it based on your personal statement. You did not read my personal statement book. Um, I will send that to you. I'll, I'll send you a PDF of it as as a guest of the application renovation. I'll, I'll send you the, the, the PDF of that book. I'll send you my new book as well um, to really help you frame the story of here's why I'm pursuing medicine, because that's the story that you need to tell, not the sales pitch of I'm ready to pursue medicine. 
Understood. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. A lot of introspection to do for sure. Yes. Everyone, everyone does. So hopefully this helps. Uh, hopefully it'll help you put together a strong application this coming cycle. In terms of when to apply next, I think you're ready to apply this next cycle based okay. on the fact that you're working towards all of the deficiencies in this application already. So mm -hmm. um, you don't have any work that you need to do towards stats. It's the clinical experience, which you're getting, and then just the writing, which you're, you'll uh, you'll work on. Yep. Sounds All right. Good. Well, thank, thank you, you so for, much for coming on. Hopefully this helps and hopefully it helps a lot of other people watching this as well.